Hi everybody. Today we're going to use this as an inspiration. This is a Suffolk puff. I believe they're also called yo-yos. Um, but they're really just made from a circle of material that's gathered up. One side is flat, the other is pleated in. And I thought, what can I do with these? They were very interesting, beautifully made, uh, very neat. So I I uh, started with a piece of linen. It is a, a slightly um, mushroom kind of colour. And um, I thought, okay, that's a good start. Now I'll need something bright. So I brought in this extreme orange taffeta or silk and um, some nice gold. Wouldn't that be nice? And that uh, sparkly orange organza that you saw earlier. So now it comes down to what am I going to do? So what I uh, decided was that I would make some more circles. And here I am. I'm using my, my glass to cut around. Well, you could use a lot of different things. The glass, actually, we're having a heat wave here. And I ended up with a bit of condensation. I didn't really need to use my fabric marker because... Uh, the condensation marked the fabric, but not permanently, so it doesn't matter. Anyway, I cut those out, and now I'm having a go at this um, extreme orange. And I thought three of these would do me. So I'm just marking out a circle, a shape. As long as it's roughly a circle, I don't get that fussy about things. There. And so folding it over means I can do two at once. I'm aiming for three of these. So once I've got the two, I'll just go round, um, use that as a template and cut one more. So that's my plan is to first make these circles. Here's my third one of this orange. I've got two of those, look, that gold. The gold is more like a, or oh, a very soft, um, maybe it's a satin, but it's very soft. It's not, it's not a hard one. And here's the organza. This is a crystal organza, and so it has a bit of shine. It also has a bit of variation in its colour. It goes from bronze through to a dark colour. I'm making a rough circle, and folding it over twice so I get two of them easily enough, and using um, that Suffolk puff as a guide, and just making it larger than that. So there we go. We've got a series of circles so far. What will I do with them? don't know. <sighs> but let's have a go at a Suffolk puff. I, no way I can do it as neat as my mother. But I just give you the, um, the basics. So with a circle like that, you get a cotton. I like to use two strands because uh, when you pull it, it needs to be certainly strong. So we're doing that. We're going in and out. We're just sort of basically doing a running stitch. Oh, maybe an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch in from the edge. And we pull it up and what we end up with is a little puff ball. I have used these a lot of times for uh, all kinds of things. I've made mushrooms, I've made eyeballs with a little bit of uh, padding inside them. Uh, you know, for, for puppets and things. I've just used them a lot. So I'm just basically doing that with all of these. Once you get it, um, you pull it up, you just do a couple of stitches over top of each other to anchor it. And uh, there you are. That's it in a, in a nutshell. So here I am and I have a bunch of basic circles. Can you see how everything is toning the same sort of colour? Well, yeah, well, yes, I've got my orange, which is a... A nice pop. I like a pop of colour. I like a accent colour. But it's kind of... Uh, you need something bright as well because the background I've chosen is a little bit uh, ordinary. So I've decided here, look at this lovely old lace doily. It's stained and rough. It's got a few nice colours already in it. It's got a hole in it so I don't feel bad about cutting it up. Um, but I'm going to start using it. And just 
experimenting with how I may want to place things. See the organza circle there? Now, doesn't that look nice when we use the Suffolk Puff or Yo-Yo in the centre? That looks pretty good already. Um, and I could spend a lot of time doing this, um, sorting things out, putting it in different arrangements, looking for balance. Look, no, I don't really like that. Off we go. Um, but yes, so I decide that it needs a pop. Now, this is a good start. I've cut that doily into pieces and I've overlapped three of these crystal organza circles. And can you see that everywhere it's made different shades of orange where it overlaps or with the lace underneath it or where two layers have gone on top of each other. It really is quite interesting. So I'm starting here. I have a lovely variegated pearl cotton in oranges and yellows. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stitch around those three circles. I don't care if it goes inside or outside the edge because I'll probably go around them a few times and I'll get what a bits, whatever bits I missed the next time. But it, it'll manage to hold all that down at once. So that's why I'm doing it. That's, uh, it's my tacking as well as my first lines of stitching. And I'm quite happy with that. That's a really good start. It's taken that, um, what's the word? Uh, not bland, but um, dull background. And we've given ourselves some oomph now to, to get started on some brighter color and some lighter color to, um, to highlight. It can't all be the one color. It would be a little bit boring. So here I am, I'm gonna speed it up, but really I'm just going around those circles in that variegated pearl cotton. You know, it's not too thick. It's uh, probably a five. Um, you know, but so something that I can easily pull through. That's all I care about. And I'm just doing where they intersect as well, around the three total circles, just to hold them together and to make sure that we've trapped down that lace in places and we've left parts of it poking out as well. Now when you're finished with the cotton, take it through to the back and do a couple of stitches on top of each other and give it a snip and you're ready for the next stage. And this is where I fuss around looking again, thinking where do I want things? You know, it can be um, quite... Uh, annoying <laughs> not knowing but that's where the fun is you try it in loads of different ways i've decided to get one of these lovely orange puffs that we made and um i'm using the flat side up rather than the the um mm, pleated side up so and what i'm doing is up from the center i'm just making some tighter stitches out towards the edge not many but what i'm doing is trying to flute out a little um, petal shape and I'll do it a couple of times in the one spot there to just and as I'm going I'll just try and pull that little petal shape up so it turns instead of a circle it's got a little bit of vague petalness a little bit of flower shape to it and um, yeah that gives it a little certain something I can work with so I will do that with all three of those eventually, but I've grabbed some uh, yellow thread to do it so it shows up. Hmm. And um, well, what will I do? I'm thinking it looks a little bit like a little violet or um, a yeah, something like a violet shape or a pansy. So I'm happy to have those. Uh, that one large petal at the bottom and um, the smaller petals at the top. So now that I've got that basic shape there, I'm just going to do a couple of little stitches. So a couple of little stitches that are just surface stitches and they're just a sort of, um, uh, you know, radiating down from the center out a little bit just to break up that orange and we'll work out later what we want to do but it's a good start i'm happy with that 
so as I put it on here I'll use the same fabric I've chosen a place where I, I want it and I'll just as a, as I would a button I will bring the thread up and down through the back and up again and make sure that I've totally um, stitched it there onto the backing fabric and when I do do that this is where I'll add in those little lines and that'll be an, an extra way to try and um, adhere it to the background so I'll just do those little tiny stripes that I was talking about hopefully here or follow the lines I've already done And now let's get the Suffolk puffs out and think about where we, we may want them. Now this could go on forever, this uh, trying to decide to balance the design out. No, I don't really like that, but I will continue to play, changing things. I quite like the idea of two of those orange ones together and one apart. Um, mm, I don't know. I will try it in the surround and see what I think, but it will change. It will definitely change. You know, it um, it's a work in progress, and we we always like to play, don't we, and see what comes best. We might add more to it. It might take things away, but it's very hard to decide. So when we do think we know what we want, you know, it's a uh, it's a good idea to take a photo if you want and uh, think how you may want it um, but what we do now is we start to stitch some things down I've pinned it pinned those little flowers in to start with I've grabbed another pearl kind of cotton and this one has a lovely oranges yellows it's a little bit darker than the last one that I used and I'm going to use that so I've taken a photo to sort of remind me of how I may want to do it. I'm using the pearl cotton and I'm not going up through the center. I'm going on the edge like the last quarter inch or last centimeter or half a centimeter of the edge of those Suffolk puffs. And I'm going extending out into the organza um, background. So... Uh, you may notice that I very rarely do a, a whole stitch and then go back into the inside and then out to the outside and into the inside because I figure it uses twice as much cotton. So what I like to do is I just uh, yeah, go next to it. So I'm on the outside, I, I now I'm on the inside, I go next to it, I go out to the outside and then I go a little bit next to it and then back into the inside and it just saves me that return stitch and uh, saves some uh, thread but you can see what I'm basically doing is um, making like spokes on a wheel that would go outside from there we can consider that stamens or something interesting on the flower when we're finished any color back through to the back a couple of stitches and trim it and that's it so you can see now I've started to do that on all of the Suffolk puffs. Can you see? That's the original, just a little bit. Um, yeah, quite happy there. But what I'll do now is I'll grab a little bit more. And I'll go back and you can see I've gone around it again and added a little bit more. And it really is starting to look good. It's like a little little centers of the flower with the stamens there I think that looks quite nice um, yeah so I've just gone round again I'm varying the length of those stitches so, and the background let's go for the background well I added in this lace and now the idea is once again I'm using a variegated pearl cotton it's a peachy creamy lemony it's got all those colors in it so I am just using it to go around these leaf shapes and every now and again I'm stitching through it to make sure that I have attached it 
I'm not going to get too worked up. I can go around it again if I've missed a bit. But it's just to hold it down and to add an edge. And that's what I'm trying to do. Um, I'm also thinking that I might add in a few more leaf shapes, you know. Maybe I'll just do a few freeform ones. Um, because I, I would like something more in the background, like a, like, um, more like a shadow leaf, like a, something that you don't see quite so well, just an outline. So that's what I'm doing right now, as you can see. Now, if you weren't uh, confident to do a leaf shape, you know, you can always go out and grab a leaf and draw around it or uh, copy the shapes that are already there. Uh, trace around with a bit of see-through paper and then mark it with a um, disappearing fabric marker. But you can see how it's working. I, I like to just sort of have different layers of, um, what's the word, <sighs> see-throughness. <laughs> no, that doesn't work, does it? But you know what I mean. It's like um, solidity, shall we say. And here I am coming back again and making sure there's something in that area. I don't want it all to just be one blob in the center. I'm looking for balance. I'm looking to have it all extend uh, out from that main pattern and to create a really interesting picture. And I think I'm managing that. There, let's have a look. See, it traps those uh, shapes and turn them into leaves quite handily. Now I've just um, pinned this puff here uh, flat side up like I did the, the orange one and just whilst I'm doing it I'm just going to put one or two stitches through it and that'll help to just tack it there and then I can get rid of that pin so I'm not going to be continually um, knotting my thread around it. And I won't go to a lot more trouble than that on the background. You can see how that works. And, um, you know, it's all quite good. Now I'm looking for some orange. I mean, because aren't those little orange flowers so extreme? So I'm looking for an orange that's in between. A little bit less, but, you know, taking us towards that colour. And with this here, this uh, Suffolk pup that I did in this lovely gold shimmery gold I am now doing some doing the same thing but I'm doing it in in uh, in from the center and out to the edge and when I go to the edge I go a little bit in so that it's forcing that into a petal shape you know what I mean it's not it's you see a little bit in a little bit in uh, so it pulls it in tight once I've done that, I then grabbed a purple dark colour uh, button. I used a purpley button because it's that colour is actually there in some of the other puffs. So I'll just sort of bring that in. Um, and then I'll do, oh, put in the other one. It looks quite good. And it's, so it's a matter of using that Suffolk puff flat side up, doing that, making the little petals by by dragging that in with a few simple stitches and then sewing that button on in the center to hold it down. There we are. So I've only done two of them. Not too hard, but I'm not going to finish there. That's just to, to adhere it to the fabric. Uh, next, I would like to do it, just a few more stitches on it. So I grab a um, a burnt orange kind of colour and I just do a few stitches out from the centre, around about the centre. And it made it sort of fit in a little bit better. Made the orange not be so, uh, show up quite so much as well. It's a work in progress, we'll get there. So we're getting near 
the end of what we want to do. And I have decided one of the things is centers for these Suffolk puffs. Some of them I've decided I'm going to do in a big chunky uh, matte gold bead. So I grab some orange thread, which I think would be matching up from the center and I uh, put it through a bead and then I back down again. These things look really good in a cluster, so I'll probably put you know, four or five of them in the centre of the flowers, and that'll give it uh, some interesting aspect for the centres. Well, I won't do it on them all. I mean, I have uh, some there that I might just put a button on, but you know, mix it up a little bit. Here's my gold beads though, they really are quite interesting. A yellow one there would be nice, a few of these beads for the others. And um, yeah, just work on doing something interesting. Now there's a hint there, if you ever have to have those tiny little seed beads, it's so much easier not to put the bead on your needle, to, but to put them down in a bowl or something, a lid of something and put your needle through the bead and pick it up that way. It's already threaded then. So much easier and uh, you'll find that's something I do a lot when it comes to beading because it certainly saves me some effort. So let's try the same with a button. And up through the center and we've all sewn on a button before I hope I like to do the cross in the center right you can do it as two bars you know because there's four holes but I like to do a cross so that's what I'm doing and I'm just going to make sure that I do it at least twice so that it stays there in that center as I wish um, and then I'll go through the rest of the flowers and I will make it um, so that some of them are beaded and some of them are buttoned and they'll all have nice centers. I'm giving you a closer look here at how that's turned out. I've even put a little gold bead in the center of those orange flowers. But um, now I'm thinking to bring in a little bit of purple. Uh, there was purple in it. You can see I just pointed out a purple button, a little bit of purple in some of those yo-yo flowers. Um, so yeah, I'd like to add a little bit to that orange just to um, make it not quite so bright. So I've started with a purple. It is a rayon kind of um, single thread, shiny rich purple and I'm just going to do some some more just simple simple stitches now out from that central bead I thought might help to start blending some of that color in and uh, you know knocking that bright orange into the background a little bit have you noticed that we haven't used any other stitches except for that one stitch, one simple stitch. We could have brought all kinds in had we wanted to, but this just shows you how you can just do it with the one. You can see here I added quite a bit to those little flowers. Some ah, plum colour, the purple colour, a bit more gold. These little flowers still disturb me most. There's always some little thing. I've taken off the gold bead and I'm putting on that little black button to to see if that helps. See? That looks a bit better, I think. You can even add in a few extra stitches from the hole in the button out through the through to the outside edge and get some little radiating lines out that way. So sometimes when you finish something and something isn't quite right, you know, cover up the thing that you think it might be. 
um, and just isolate what it is that you, you think is wrong and don't give up on it but you might need to make a few little changes to make yourself happy so I'm happy with my little orange flowers now and I've just decided that I think what I would like is just a smidgen more of that orange color and what better way to find it than to shred it off the uh, the edge of that piece of material and then it's exactly the same so all I want to do is just add in a few little stitches and that's going to be in those gold flowers that have the purple button on it and it just gives that little touch of orange somewhere else so that those don't stand out quite so boldly and that's it no more fiddling around I have finished and I'm really quite happy with the outcome it's something different and um, it's used up some of the old things that I had and I was quite happy with the arrangement it's sort of a old-fashioned kind of piece with a with a new modern twist so I hope you've enjoyed watching that and that you've gained something and uh, and that you'll join me next time so if you have liked it do press like and subscribe to my channel my name's Tracy from Art Fiber Stitch you'll find me through any of the links below and once again thank you for watching